Now, just to recap uh, these slides, huh? what does this slide uh, important to you? Um, recover the heat loss, huh? HF equal to 4FL divided by D, V squared divided by 2G. The F that I highlight with yellow color, this F here is also a friction factor. However, this friction factor we name uh, in the textbook or in the uh, modeling world, we name this F as the fanning factor. Okay, it's a fanning factor. So if you use graph to, to generate, you use Moody chart to generate the F, you need to divide it by four. Okay, the, the, the blue color one is you, you get it from the graph. So if you want to use this formula, uh, if you want to use uh, 4FL divided by dV squared divided by 2G, you need to take the value from the graph divided by 4 so that you will becoming a fanning factor to calculate into this formula. Or in other way, you can straight away uh, replace this one, 4F equal to the F, uh, equal to the F as uh, you get from the graph. Okay, you can memorize either two, two formula. Okay, either this one, or if you want to get straight from the graph, you can memorize HF, the heat loss, uh, equal to, maybe I use capital F to represent the, the force that you get from the graph. D, L, V square divided by 2G. Okay, just to take note on this one. Okay, you can memorize this one or this one. The differences is the F. Okay, if you want to use the top equation, the one that you get from here, please remember to divide it by 4. Then you only you can substitute the, the value or we call it fanning factor for this equation. Okay, so try to study these this slides uh, for your coming test and uh, final exam. Okay. Don't confuse. Huh? And then uh, one tutorial question as a homework to look at. Okay, I'm not going to explain this one. It's quite direct. Right, so for second session, we're going to cover what is minor loss. Okay, just a recap, what is major loss, what is uh, minor loss? Major loss is due to the viscous defect and is linked with the straight part. Okay, the first one, major loss. Second one is due to component. Component means the elbow, uh, the valve, and so on. Okay, so this second section, we're going to focus on minor loss. Right. So, there's an equation. The rest you can read huh, from my slides. So, if you haven't seen what is VAF, is what you see on the screen now. This is called VAF. Okay. You studying engineering, you study fluid mechanics before, don't tell your future colleague you don't know what is buff. Okay, or you want need to communicate with the technician. You need to communicate with the the, the part man or foreman. You don't tell that you don't know what is this called. This called buff. Okay. This is the equation for second session. Uh, before we calculate the uh, minor loss. We need to understand what is loss coefficient or KL. Huh? Loss coefficient equal to HL minor divided by V squared divided by 2G. Okay, KL or loss coefficient equal to HL minor or your heat loss minor due to the component divided by V squared divided by 2G, you can rewrite as delta P divided by your dynamic uh, pressure, half rho V squared. Okay. 
then you rearrange delta p equal to hl half rho v square or in other more simpler form your hl or your heat loss due to the component we call it hl minor is kl you take the loss coefficient times the velocity square divided by 2g okay now what is so important about these slides these slides there are three three formula this one will give you the loss the pressure loss inside the pipe or pressure difference between two point that due to the L band over here. Okay. It will ask you like point one after one turn, second turn, third turn, what is the pressure at the last the output here? So this equation is to calculate the delta P from point one to tell point two. There's a loss of pressure because of all these components. Okay. Then you might ask to, to calculate the uh, heat loss due to the head loss minor due to the component. You can use loss coefficient times the velocity square divided by 2g. One is to calculate loss pressure or pressure loss. One is to calculate head loss. Okay. These two is important for second session today. Right. So this graph is just to explain what is this uh, equation about. So if you plot graph, you plot HL minor versus velocity. As you can see, you plot this is your y axis. And this is your x axis. You having actually you're having y equal to a x square. Okay, this is a quadratic equation. This is a quadratic graph. So if you plot this graph, this k divided by 2g is a constant, it is your a. If you plot your x equal to velocity, so you have x squared, so you plot, you get this uh, quadratic graph. It means that as you increase as you increase your velocity, your heat loss is going to double, going to square in a square uh, dimension. Okay. So again, this is a valve, and this slide is dimensional analysis, which I will go very fast because this one already covered uh, the the technique already covered in 3179, the last chapter for dimensional analysis. So you read through these slides, okay? Yeah, I won't test you in the coming test of final exam on dimensional analysis, okay? Um, the next one will be, oh, this one is, the next one is the equivalent length. Equivalent length give you this equation. So what is uh, equivalent length? Mean you need to calculate uh, a length that you can use so that you are having the same pressure drop. Okay, the equivalent length of the pipe from one point to second point. If you change the diameter, you change the uh, loss coefficient, you change the friction of the pipe, uh, then what is the equivalent length to get the same pressure drop, for example? Okay. So this is the equation to calculate the equivalent length, KLD divided by F. Then the rest is just theory. As you can see, there are lots of value of uh, KL or your loss coefficient. Okay, so if you look at the first one, 
it compared to the second one. So if you have a re-entrance that you can see there's a protruded, there's a part that go into the tank here. So you can see the KL equal to 0.8. However, if you cut away this section, you cut away this section and it become a sharp edge entrance, you can see the value drop a little bit. Okay, the value drop means the flow more easier to go in, less friction, huh? less friction. Then as you can see, uh, if you improve the surface roughness or smooth, smoother surface, you can see that the KL value dropped to 0 0.2. 0 0.5 dropped to 0.2 because you're getting smoother, uh, sorry, you smoother round corner here. You can see a round corner compared to the this one. This one is a sharp corner. You polish up the this corner. You can see the KL drop to 0.2. Then you further improve the corner of the pipe here compared to this one. You have a better roundness of this one. Or we call it fillet, you fillet more roundness. Uh, if you use, if you learn about SOLIDWORKS and uh, AutoCAD uh, technical drawing, you have a bigger fillet size. Then more water is more easier to go into the pipe. So as you can see, the KL value dropped to 0 0.04. And this one was collected in the experiment data uh, by researcher. Okay, so as you can see, uh, uh, what happens if you have a different rough, roughness of uh, surfaces? Okay. And then the rest you can read through. Uh, one particular word is called vena contracta. Vena contracta. What is vena contracta? If you look at this diagram, I think straight away you understand what is vena contracta. Okay, as you can see, water channel from the left into right hand side. From point one, you can see if you have a water from a big tank, velocity one we usually we use zero. Okay, then it goes into this like channel because there is a surface, a sharp corner, then they will generate some turbulent flow at the corner here. So you will have a region with a smooth flow from this point to this point, we call it vena contracta. Okay, vena contracta. This is a, a specific word. So if you mention vena contracta means you already take this, uh, you already taken 3279 module meaning you already know what is vena contractor. Okay, you heard before, uh, vena, uh, vena contractor. It's an area where you measure from the turbulent flow uh, or outside the turbulent flow to another turbulent flow, or it's a neck, or there's a region where the flow is a smooth flow, okay? So this one normally happen, vena contracta normally happen at the sharp corner. Vena contracta usually happen at sharp corner. Okay. So in energy, in, in, in engineering design, we will avoid sharp corner. If you study aerodynamics, if you study flow uh, design or flow mechanics, then we will try to avoid sharp corner because vena contracta will appear in your design. Meaning you, you, you squeeze, it's like you're squeezing the, the flow inside the pipe. Okay. Right. The next one, uh, as you can see, uh, what is the graph uh, from uh, sharp entrance into the, the change of your R divided by T. What is the graph, as you can see here? R, what is R here is the radius of your 
of your inlet. Okay, it's your inlet here. So if you increase your R, if you if you keep your D uh, fixed and you keep increasing your R, meaning more and more easier the flow get into the pipe, the higher fillet roundness, you can see the KL dropping. Eh? KL is a uh, is a friction is a loss coefficient. Okay, it will drop. Okay. Another one is uh, another opposite. Which just now what I show you is from left to right. What happened if you switch the flow? Uh, okay, this one is from left to right, and we have the uh, re-entrant sharp edge uh, rounded uh, surface like this. What happened if we convert? If we if we have a different case, as you can see here. The flow is flowing from the pipe into the big tank. If you compare 0.1 and 0.2, at 0.2 your KL equal to one. Okay. Equal to one. Just let you know. Huh? So if you have a pipe go into a big tank, your KL straight away equal to one. This uh, number, okay. So this is the hidden information. If in a test or exam, if you see a part go into the water, a big tank, you can use KL equal to one in your calculation. Okay, but normally KL will be given, so don't worry. All right. The next one is just a few more uh, chart to refer to. So as you can see, what happened to the KL? if you have a ratio between A1 and A2. So if you can see from the graph on the left hand side, you take A2 divided by A1 and you increase uh, or uh, you decrease or you increase A1 or A2 as you can see the ratio. As the ratio between A2 divided by A1, so if you move from left to right, uh, you can uh, interpret this one as either you are increasing the A2, you're increasing the A2. So you can see the KL is dropping because as you drop, what mean by KL means the value drop, the KL drop means is easy to move or it becomes smoother the flow, smooth flow. Okay, KL means the if the KL value drop means it's more easier to flow. Okay, so as you can see from the right hand side, right hand side, if you take A1 divided by A2, the shape of the graph is different. Huh? The shape one is uh, like this, one is a bit, uh, it's like a, 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 this cave, uh, this, this form. Uh, okay. So if you compare side by side, actually it's a bit different. Eh? The the one, the the axis at the bottom is different. One is A2 divided by A1. One is A1 divided by A2. If you look at the diagram, diagram also different. The left one, A1 is bigger than A2. The right hand side, the A1 is smaller than A2. HL formula is given. Okay, HL formula is given. So in test or final exam, there's no reason why you cannot solve because the equation is inside the graph. You will see this kind of graph in the reference uh, area if this kind of question come up. Okay. The next one will be um, on the control volume to calculate the we use the control volume to calculate the heat loss of the certain expansion. As you can see, uh, we have this red color region here. We, con we divide this region into A, B, and C as section two. And the, the water or the fluid is coming from the left into right. So you have point A, you have a, a uniform flow V1. 
And at point two, there's no flow at A, there's no flow at C, because there's a counter flow at A and C. And just uh, since we are seeing this counter flow, in your assignment one, try to find where is this counter flow in the last question of your assignment one. Okay, when you plot the vector diagram, or you plot the contour of your vector. If you zoom in into the airfoil, you manage to find the circulation at particular area. OK, just give you some hints if you want to score high in your assignment one. OK, then back to this lecture. Point three, you are seeing that uh, it will reach a fully developed uh, flow that you can see the V3 is uniform flow at this region. OK, then you apply energy equation. And you assume the pressure is constant. On the uh, left hand side, meaning uh, A equal to B equal to C equal to same pressure at point B. Then at the end, you have all this equation. So continuity equation, you, you consider you continuity means mass la, or mass flow. So how you calculate mass flow, you take A divided by uh, A times V, you get Q. All right, you get Q, Q is the same from point A to point C. Momentum equation, momentum equation is calculating force. Force is pressure times area. So pressure one times Area three minus pressure three minus area three will equal to this one. Okay. Then what is important is this equation. Okay, what is important? from this graph to here. You combine continuity, momentum, energy, you will get KL equal to one minus A1 minus A2 square. And this one is from small area to big area. Okay, and this one is for sudden expansion, meaning the, the fluid is suddenly go into a big space then your KL can be calculated using this formula. KL minus one minus A1 divided by A2 squared. This one is for certain expansion. As you can see, it's from small to big. Huh? It's from small to big. Point A, point two, point three is a very big area. So this is a graph that you can see from this equation. Okay, small to big, small to big. Okay. And this equation prove this line. If you change the ratio, you can plot this graph in using Excel. All right, uh, what happened if you have an angle inside the pipe? Meaning you can see from this diagram, you can see that the, the volume is from the left going to the big pipe here with an angle theta. So you refer to this graph, you can see there's a spike. There's a spike of uh, your KL value. Okay, there's a spike of KL value on the graph. This is for the cone diffuser meaning you have an angle, okay, meaning you have an angle, and you can calculate your KL with this formula, okay. Now you have a, a few slides already, eh? you have a few chart to refer to for your final. So what does it mean? This graph is important. This one is important. And we already proved 
that this graph, you can calculate KL by using this formula from small to big. We already calculate this equation. And we also give you this graph when you have a conical diffuser where you have an angle over here, theta. And you can calculate the KL also using this equation. Okay, let's say your angle is 90 degree. So you enter this graph from below. Meet this graph. Go to the left. You can get your KL. Okay. Or you can calculate the value here. You can get what is your uh, value for your KL. Okay. Another one, this one is conical. Another one is a smooth corner, like this. A smooth corner in a 90 degree band. 90 degree band, but this one is a curvature, smooth curvature. Right? If you cut, if you cut the, this cross section, you can see that there is a secondary flow that go on the left hand side, it go anti-clockwise. On the right hand side, it go clockwise. Okay. You are having a separation flow. Okay, secondary flow, where you can refer to this chart. You have KL value and R over D. What is R? R is the radius of your center. Radius of reference. For example, where is this value zero for your R is here. Oh, sorry, here. Okay, so there's no value for the radius. So there must be some radius here. Okay, so this one, let's say here to here is maybe 0 0.5. Of course, divided by D. Lah. Okay, you, by D, you get this. Then here is the maximum and so on. Okay. Uh, another configuration in pipe, yeah. Uh, two more slides, then we stop. Huh? All right. So another configuration in pipes, huh, when you use pipe, uh, on the left hand side diagram is without the guide veins. Right hand side is guide vein. What is guide vein? You can see this one, the small like a hair inside here. You see the curvature. What does this curvature? Let me draw in uh, 3D. Huh? Try to draw. So this all this uh, curve, uh, it means uh, there is a guide there inside the pipe. It's like a fin that guide the flow. So what happened if you have the water? flow from here. So the water will follow the shape of the guide and flow like that. Second stream will go here. You follow the shape of this guide and go into this section. And the same with others. You will follow the shape of this guide. So this guide is here, like guided veins. So as you can see, the you can if you're designing something for end user application for fluid dynamics, you can see there's a use, there's a, a very useful, you have these guide veins in your design. You can see that the loss coefficient dropped to 0 0.2. It's very significant huh? because it's eliminate the separation of flow inside the pipe here. If you compare side by side, okay, the Highlighted area is eliminated by guided pin. This slide is why it's so important because there might be a question ask you how to reduce K 
people in the park. What are the mechanisms that you can use? What are the mechanisms that you can use to reduce KL value inside a pipe, especially at the bend at the corner? The answer is using gut veins. Why gut veins useful? Because it eliminates separation flow in the pipe. Got it? All right. Uh, before we stop, let me ask a question. Uh, okay, Shirley. Are you there, Shirley? Yes, sir. Can you uh, can you uh, can you summarize why we need to use uh, gut pain? Uh, it's easy because um, we want to reduce the uh, uh, frictions at the corner, mm. especially the corners, like the sharp corners there. Mm. Okay, good. All right, so you need to mention uh, the separation flow. We eliminate the separation flow. And also we reduce the KL value. We reduce the uh, loss coefficient. Means we the flow becomes smoother with the guided pins. OK, so this is the answer. Um, okay. Before we go, I have one uh, YouTube video. So let me stop the recording first and then I'll show you this video. Then we call it a day. <laughs> 